If you are self-employed, whether a visual artist, guitar player, music producer, independent contractor of any kind, I can hear you now. There's no way I'm buying a house in this market, or probably ever. Well, having been in your shoes, literally all the boots aforementioned, I could say that that's just not true. This is not a class, although maybe it should be. Uh, this is just a one-off video. But if you do these three things, just these three things, you can purchase a home. If you've never been to my channel before, my name is Joshua Smith. I do videos like this pretty often where I just throw some advice on the wall for whoever to see. If you could like the video, it would help me out. And if you want to subscribe, I'm sure that you're going to find more content like this worth your while. Now let's talk, real talk. I am a creative. I don't just make super good looking videos. I'm a visual artist. See, I had a short stint as an actor. Through all that, I've played music. In the past, as a result of all of that, I've held every job you can imagine, from a gas station attendant to a construction subcontractor, on up to a sea level you know. That's enough proof, I hope, uh, to show you that I've been there. I know the good, the bad, and everything in between. Through all of that, even when I started making six figures a year, I was tracking expenses to make sure that my tax obligation was as low as it could be. I never didn't pay taxes, but I see you too. <laughs> Does any of this sound familiar? Everyone is in a slightly different situation, but this will work for anyone if you are diligent and can make sense of it for yourself. Because basically it's all strictly based on what a lender is looking at. Your debt to income ratio or DTI, your credit score. You also need a down payment, but this is situational. Now, step one relates to your income and it involves getting your taxes in order. I know this seems a little bit backwards, but your tax return is where a traditional lender is going to qualify your income. A mortgage lender is not looking at what you make on your bank statement. Although it helps if you can show cash flow in a business or a personal account if your credit debt is high. They need to know what you bring home after your expenses. And they look at your tax return for that information. What this means is you may have to report more income and less expenses, which will require a little bit more to Uncle Sam. So your situation will dictate what this looks like, but a lender can help navigate those income needs based on your existing credit score and credit worthiness. So here's what to do. First, get in touch with a lender. If you don't have one, I'll get you one based on your location and needs, and then find out how much you have to show in order to qualify. It may not be a big shift in what you're reporting now, but it has to be consistent. Uh, the key is to show two years of income at a consistent or growing rate. You can go back and refile previous year, year's tax returns if you need to with the IRS, but if you need a little bit more time, just start today and budget according to the plan that you and your lender put in place to reach that income goal. Now, step two relates to building your credit. If you have a perfect score, then just skip ahead. You know all of this. If you have mountains of credit, this could take you longer than two years, but the process is the same as if you have no credit debt at all. The goal here is to build a healthy relationship with credit, right? Most of us weren't taught how this works. But basically, all you have to do is utilize a debt and pay it off every month. A low limit credit card is the most straightforward method. Basically, get a $500 credit limit card with Capital One or whoever and use it for groceries, personal use. Stuff that you know that you're already going to pay for, stuff that's are, amounts that are already in your bank account, even if that's after your paycheck. I put all my subscriptions on credit because it helps me to track all of my subscriptions, for one, but it also, those payments generally don't change, and then I can just set an auto draft to come out and leave my bank account every month. Super easy, plug and play, just watch your credit score grow. Now, I know people that have built up their score with a uh, new car payment. Again, every situation is different. It's all going to depend on your credit worthiness. Just keep your credit utilization below 40% month over month if you can. 20% is even better. That means that if you have a $500 limit credit card, uh, let no more than $100 to $200 sit on that card month to month. Now, if you have existing credit debt, this is where the balance comes in and we have to talk about income again. But I do think that it's possible for anyone with just two years time, if you're consistent, to be able to qualify for a mortgage and buy a house. Step three is just balance and consistency. The secret is people build their credit with cash. Make money, pay down some debt. Every time you make a larger than normal amount, 
make a payment to your debt. It raises your credit score. So if you have debt already, that could really help you build your score up. You might have to get a second job or take on some extra work, but the higher your score, the better your interest rate is gonna be. The better the rate, the lower your payment. Your debt to income ratio is just that. It puts the debt that you pay monthly next to the amount of money that you make per month. So your tax return income divided by 12, and then those two numbers give them a percentage. For most banks right now, they're looking for no more than 40%, check with a lender, uh, but that varies by lender, which I'm not. I'm gonna go back to step one. You really need to speak with a lender, but this information is paramount to getting qualified for a mortgage to buy your first house. Uh, you need good credit, you need good payment history, and you need qualifiable income that is greater than 60% that you pay towards your debt month over month. And you need to show this income consistently for the previous two years to putting in your mortgage application. So if you take on a second job, keep it through the purchase of the house. The bank will probably need that income for your application. Now that you have your three super secret hot tips to getting qualified for that mortgage, and getting in your first house. You probably have more questions. Most of those will have to wait for another day. Ask them in the comments below so that I can know what you need. Wait, I didn't, I didn't talk about the down payment. Okay, so, so down payments will help you keep your payment down and it'll help qualify for a, a larger amount. But different states and banks have programs for first time home buyers that are based on income and home use. I'm in Tennessee, also licensed in Alabama, and both states have options for this. So if you're buying a primary residence, you make under 100K a year, you may not need to come up with a down payment at all. If you make more, or this is a second purchase, or you don't intend to live there as a primary residence, then there will be a down payment obligation for sure. But every situation is gonna be different. It's gonna be based on that debt to income ratio and other things. Hit me up with your questions. Let's get in touch with a lender, apply for a mortgage when the time is right, and you might be closer than you think. I'll talk to you soon.